What's good everyone? It's Uni and today I am here to talk with you guys about Metaphor Refantagio. Refantagio? Tagio? I'm still iffy about the pronunciations, but I know I am a little late to the party um, since the live stream showcase was two days ago, April 22nd, but it was my birthday, so I was out. I was busy. I'm sorry, but I'm here now. And for those of you guys who are interested in hearing my thoughts, I hope you guys enjoy this video. So I wanted to start off with my initial reactions to the trailer that they showed at the beginning of the showcase. When the trailer came on, the first thing that caught my eye was obviously how beautiful and unique the characters look. Like their designs were super pretty, super fantasy-like. I mean, that's, that's what the game is going for. And also the combat that they were showing in the game looked really dynamic, but we'll get more into the combat system later on. It was really cool that for this game, we don't have the same silent pro tag that we see in other Atlas titles. I just feel like it's a nice change of pace, especially since you could see their personality show a little more in their own dialogue, I guess, rather than just plain text that you see on the screen. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how our pro tag is within the game. So next, the UI. Oh my God. The UI for Metaphor is so, so pretty. I saw some images and GIFs of it on Twitter before I even saw the showcase. And oh my God, like I knew Atlas was just good at making really pretty looking UIs, but man, I feel like they knocked it out of the park with this game, especially since it looks super, I don't know, like whimsical and something you definitely would see in a fantasy game. Like they really stuck the theme for what they wanted this game to be. And I don't know, I, I could really appreciate how much detail they put into creating that menu design. And for those of you guys who don't know, the director who worked on SMT3, P3, P4, and P5 was working on Metaphor V Fantasio. So when we're talking about what they show in the game later, you may see a lot of overlap in terms of gameplay um, and stuff like that because of that. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think that's what makes Atlas games atlas games but again we will get more into detail later on in the video the release date for this game is on october 11th 2024 so we still got a couple months left um six more months which sounds like a long time but i feel like these six months are going to go by really fast but honestly i hope it goes a little faster because i am very very excited to experience this game for myself so moving on to what they showed on the dev showcase so they wanted to use this game as a way to bring new people into their their brand um, but also they wanted to make sure that this game was something that old fans could also enjoy. It's like similar to the other games that they have that people already love, but just packaged in a way that is, I, I guess, more appealing to newer people just because it's like a nice, cool looking fantasy game. We'll see how that plays out. I do hope a lot of new people decide to enjoy Alice games because we all know that they are really, really fun and, and have beautiful stories and beautiful designs, but we shall see how that is. So a little summary on what the game is going to be about is that the main protag is trying to become a king after the king was assassinated by gaining the support of people for a magical election. Now the support that he's gonna get will lead into our little social link like system in the game, but I'll elaborate on that later as well. Sorry, I keep saying later, I promise we'll, we'll get through everything. <laughs> we'll get through everything in the game. So the way that you gain these supporters and you know, gain these bonds, you'll be traveling around the world to visit different tribes, meet new allies and gain support. An interesting thing is that while you're traveling, obviously there's gonna be a combat system, but the enemies that you fight are actually called humans. The monsters in this game is, are called humans, which that was, pretty interesting. I, I kind of want to know what the reasoning behind that name is, but you know, I guess humans could be monsters. The main focus though, um, is the concept of fantasy, which is a power that we all possess. Um, it's limitations, stuff like that. So I'm really interested in how they're going to be conveying that message to us through this game. As I was gushing over the UI menu design and stuff earlier, you can really tell that a lot of thought was put into the design of this game. Um, something like the logo of the game is supposed to resemble City's Main Street, which I thought was really, really creative. Some fun little facts here and there is the background art was by Koda Kazuma, who worked on Near Automata, and then the vehicle design for like our gauntlet runner and stuff um, in the game was by Ikuso Yamashita, who worked on Neon Genesis Evangelion. So a lot of you know really cool names um were working behind the art in this game which makes sense as to why it's so beautiful and looks the way it does 
So I'm very excited to experience it for myself. Um, but speaking of vehicles, just wanted to point out a little, little side comment. You could ride your sword in this game. And when I saw that in the showcase, I got so I got so excited. I'm such a simple person to please, but that shit, that shit look cool. But yeah, anyways, back to the design. The game, when you look at it, it isn't necessarily supposed to be considered as an open world game, but because they put um, so much detail into distant backgrounds and stuff, they really wanted you to experience the unique atmospheres that they had for each of the areas that you visited. So again, there's always purpose and intent with the things that they do in the design. And I really like that. I really like the details that they, they decided to, to focus on. The music in this game, um, if you guys didn't know, is composed by Shoji Maguro, who is known for his work with the Persona games. And it's really cool because obviously it's not going to have that little pop sound that you usually hear in Persona. It's a completely different sound from him that just like even though it's so different it sounds really really good and that's just how you know he's just so good at what he does it's also funny how they they told us that the music in game is just all in the protax head i i think that little the little detail is a little funny but really cool so date and time is still a very important mechanic in this game similar to how it's like in persona where you have certain dates and certain times where you could do things um and speaking of date and time, I'm sorry if I looked super washed out, like, hold on. And the reason why they wanted to put importance on date and time is just that because in this game you are traveling a lot, they wanted to emulate the feeling of, you know, you traveling in real life, which I think is really cool. So you have fixed lengths for activities, kind of like when you're traveling and you have an itinerary where it's like, oh, I'm gonna stay here for two days, three nights. And, and then within that time, you have certain activities that you could do within that time. And you also have a set time to finish main story quest as well as side quests that are available, which they did say the side quests have um, effects on the main story. So I think they just wanted to put more, I guess, importance on doing side quests um, from what I took away from it. Another fun thing about the fact that you're traveling a lot in the game that you have these little interactions with your allies while traveling. There's even a little uh, tidbit where I think they were showing how stuff that you gather with your allies, you could like cook for them. Like you could cook items and stuff, which I thought was really cool and, and really cute. So onto the combat system. When talking about the combat system, they mentioned that it was a more dynamic combat system. So while it's still turn-based like previous Atlas titles, this one includes real-time dodging as well as their attacking elements which i thought was really cool um in fact while you're battling it showed that you could dash around the area and like analyze the enemies within your vicinity which i thought was really cool i just feel like adding a dynamic combat system makes it a lot more engaging and don't get me wrong i still enjoyed persona's combat system but i think adding a little extra makes it like i said more engaging and not you just standing there the next thing i want to bring up are the archetypes and the archetypes in this game just think of them as like the personas that you gain in persona games for combat um characters fight through their anxiety to gain archetypes and these archetypes are based on heroic figures it looked really cool in the showcase so i'm curious to to see how exactly that works now with all these combat mechanics the places that you'll be using them are called dungeons there are main and side dungeons that you're able to explore in the game and apparently there are more dungeons in this game than any previous title so now the follower system which is the bonds that you're creating with your allies this is what i mentioned in the beginning um i just wanted to point out that on twitter a lot of people were complaining about this follower system Look, man, even though there's a lot of overlap with Persona in this game in terms of like combat, people be taking the romance stuff so seriously to the point where they're like, this game isn't worth playing anymore. I'm sorry, but if you decide to turn away this beautiful game just because you can't romance people, boohoo, no romance, uh, get over it. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, for those of you guys who are actually interested in figuring out or like hearing about what the, the follower system is, these are basically like your social links in the game. Now, while it isn't romantic, you are still forging your friendships and your bonds with um, your allies that are basically your supporters and who you, you fight with. As you grow closer with your allies, you actually unlock new archetypes that you could use for your strategy and combat and stuff like that. And I think that's really cool. Um, a lot of the archetypes look 
really like nice like the sign and everything they didn't show too much in the showcase they did say that later on throughout the year they are going to be showing us more so i'm very excited to see what they have in store for that a fun thing about these archetypes is that your allies can also equip different ones so they're not just tied down to one archetype that i guess might have been tied in with their character which i think is really cool since there's a lot more customization that you could do with your team so metaphor is going to be serving as atlas's 35th anniversary commemoration title so the pre-orders for the collector's edition opened on the 22nd so if you guys are interested in copying that i would advise you to get it um i don't remember if like there's a limit to the pre-orders I just know that I, I ordered mine immediately. If you guys are interested in that, I'll link it down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just for anyone who's interested in grabbing it. So my thoughts overall, as you guys probably heard throughout my video, I couldn't stop saying that I'm just excited to experience this game for myself. The game is beautiful. All the characters look super, super interesting. And I really look forward to learning about their different personalities, especially a uh, long haired horn boy. That's what I have in my notes. I, I literally put long haired horn boy can do no wrong. Um, Stroll is also really cute. Uh, Heisme, of course, a bunny, super adorable. I'm, I'm so, so excited. Um, the combat looks a lot more fun and engaging, at least for my taste. Like turn-based really isn't like the first type of game that I go for, but I mean, I got through P3R, I play Honkai Star Rail, you know, as long as the game overall is good, I really don't mind, but I feel like the dynamic combat system that they added to this game with the real-time dodging and attacking stuff like that will make it a lot more interesting for me personally. Anyways, that's really it. That's really all I had to say. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything too important, but if you made it to the end of this video and got through all my yapping, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys are most excited about to see or experience in this game. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.